What's going on guys? Today we're going to be creating a Docker instance which powers MySQL and WordPress with Apache and we're going to do that as quickly as possible. So let's get started. Okay, to get started, make sure you've got Docker downloaded on your machine. I've got the link over here, but I'll also leave that in the description down below. Once that's done, you want to make sure that it's running. So I'm just going to pull up my integrated terminal here. I've got just a, a default window here, which is WordPress Docker. And if I run uh, Docker hyphen V, we can see that I've got a Docker version. Let me zoom in a little bit. You can see that I've got a Docker version. And also if I run Docker PS, you can see that I'm actually running zero containers right now. So I've got Docker running and I'm running version 19. So let's just drag this down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Docker compose file. Dot YAML, so YML. And then in here, we need to specify the actual version. So I'm going to say version, and then I'm going to put free. Now this is the, the type of syntax that we're going to be using in this YAML file. Okay, so next I want to specify some services. And services are the each instance that we want to be running in our application. So we need a database, obviously, and we need a WordPress instance. The two links that I've got up here is MySQL and WordPress. The reason I've got these two up is because obviously we need to store our database, our information in a database somewhere. And then we've got our WordPress instance, which is also going to bring down Apache for us. So these are the official Docker images. And again, I'll leave the link down to these in the description. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and set these up. So knock down onto new line and I'm going to set a comment and I'm just going to say this is our database. And then this is our, the next line is just our name. So what are we going to refer to our database as? So we're, whenever we're talking within this Docker kind of setup, we want to refer to the database as DB. So the reason that we do this is obviously if IPs change for whatever reason, um, our instance is always going to be referred to as DB. Next, I'm going to knock down to new line and I'm going to say image. And then what image do we want to use? So if I scroll down a little bit on the MySQL official Docker image, come down and you've got supported tags. So these tags we can actually pull down. So I could pull down version five, anything with 5.7, anything 5.7.32. And the reason that it does this is because I might only care that, you know, like I'm working on version five of the CMS or version 5.7. It doesn't matter about the point releases. You know, next time I load this up, there might be a new release, which is version 5.7.33. And that's fine for my application to run. However, I'm just going to pull the 5.7 instance at the moment and not be you know, hyper specific and, and run the uh, the latest ones. So I'm just going to say MySQL colon 5.7. So that's the image that we're going to be, uh, pull down. Then I want to specify a volume. So volumes and then I'm knocked down onto a new line and put a hyphen. Volumes is basically a way for your data to persist between your computer and the actual Docker container. So if for any reason we close down docker and that's you know very plausible you, you might shut down your computer at night or you know it crashes for whatever reason or it doesn't load on startup like we we don't want to have to run the setup every single time insert our data create our users basically set everything up it needs to be able to store that data somewhere and this is how what we do here we say uh, db underscore data and this could be anything you know i'm just calling it this because it, it's fairly common practice for people to name it something logical so database data colon and then where do you want that data to actually persist so this is on our machine and then we obviously want to match it to what is on the the, the box the the docker image and so our data db underscore data is the same as what's in slash var slash lib slash mysql that's that's basically it next i'm going to knock down to new line and i'm going to say restart always so if there any for any reason this docker uh, image failed and it ran into a crash for whatever reason, it would restart itself. So if you know it's three o'clock in the morning on Christmas morning, your, your, your website's up and running, your portfolio or whatever, and then it all crashes, you don't have to be thinking, oh, I've got to get up and start debugging it or whatever. The, you know, the image will just spin itself back up. Next, we need to specify some environment variables. So in order to actually get this set up, we need to know what like the MySQL user is, what the password is, what the database name is, and the only way that we can do that is by specif specifying some environment variables. If I scroll down maybe halfway, here we go, environment variables. And what you'll see is you can set up like MySQL root password, the database name, the user, and the password. And that's exactly what we're gonna do at the moment. So the environment variable syntax is just basically a key value pair. 
and we need to match exactly what is said here so we can't like make up our own ones we can't say user colon whatever so it's looking for this specific name so i'm going to say environment knock down onto a new line and then indent and i'm going to say mysql underscore root underscore password and i'm just going to say password because obviously this is just local development so I, i'm not i'm not too uh, worried about um, security and then next i'm going to say uh, mysql underscore database colon, and i'm just going to call this wp for wordpress and then mysql for user and let's just leave that as root then mysql underscore password and then again let's just password so we've got our, our environment variables up this is what we'd obviously need to input into um wordpress in a moment so next i want to specify a network and this is basically just connecting our services up so we've only got one service at the moment which is our database but in a moment we're going to have our wordpress uh, image set up as well so i want to create a network and knock down onto new line put a hyphen and then what do you want to name your network so i'm going to just name this wp and then save that now we can set up our actual web server. So just like we did up here, where we specified a name for the database, I'm going to come knock down on a couple of lines, put a comment, say web server, and then I'm going to give give our web server a name. So I'm just going to call this web uh, WordPress, but again, you can call this whatever you want. Now I'm going to expose a port, so uh, and we need to expose a port. Sorry, I should say. And to do that, I'm going to specify ports colon knock down to new line and then a hyphen. And essentially this is when we go to port 80 on our machine, which is going to be the port that's exposed by Apache in the configuration, it's, it's going to go to port 80 for us, not actually for the actual Docker container. So we need to say map this port to this port in the Docker container. So for I'm going to come over here, I'm going to put double quotes, a port 4000, and I'm going to say map to port 80. So when we go to port 4000 on our machine, we're talking about port 80 in the Docker image. So if I ever elaborate on that, if I say localhost 4000, that's going to go to port 80 in the actual Docker image. So moving on, next we need to put a depends on. And as I say, we don't, we don't necessarily need to put this in, but um, we do. And this depends on um, the, the actual database. So up here where we called it DB, I'm just going to refer to this. So this web server can only run if the database is running, because obviously it, it could still in theory run without the database, but we're going to need to connect to the database to pull data and set up WordPress and yada, yada, yada. So for this to work, make sure that this is running. Next, knock down to a new line, and then I'm going to specify the image just like we did up here. And I'm going to say WordPress colon latest so if i do a search for the tags that we can use obviously we can pull so many different versions of the of wordpress down and um, but i'm just going to pull the latest because um it's it's i just want the latest version obviously if this was a production ver version though i would probably want to be more specific and say i want version 5.5.3 because next time that i run this if i was running latest and i run docker, docker compose up it might be a new version and then it actually breaks my whole application so be careful with using the latest one next when do we want to restart so just like we did on uh, before we always want to restart and now we want to map some volumes so oh up here where we mapped our database data, um, data so anything that's in mysql over here make sure that's mapped to our local instance of db underscore data we want to do the same here so when we're working within the docker image I want to make sure that when I'm changing files on my my local machine, which is in this folder here, that it's getting replicated within the Docker container. So I'm going to create a folder called HTML, and you don't necessarily have to do this. It's just I like having some form of hierarchy. Because if I, if I need to go above the HTML, uh, HTML folder, I want to make sure that that is replicated on you know my version control, for, for example. So um, an example of this would be not necessarily for the version control, but if you're using a .env, you know, for environment variables would have something up here which is .env and I like just having the you know um, the system set up so that all of my my WordPress instance is running from my HTML folder just go ahead and delete that because it's important so what I'm going to do is specify an array and the reason that we specify an array is because you might have multiple folders mapped to locations within the actual um, Apache server so I'm going to say within here 
I'm going to work with the HTML folder. And then where do I want to map it? So I'm mapping my local instance of HTML. And where is Apache running from? And it's running from slash var slash dub 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 slash HTML. So our HTML folder is going to directly correlate to the HTML folder that's in the Docker image. Next, I'm going to lock down and just like we had earlier, environment variables, I'm just going to set some environment variables for WordPress. So, scroll down. Yeah, we need like the host, username and the password. So, come back. Say WordPress underscore DB oh, underscore host. And this is mapping. So, like I said earlier, if we had an IP, we want to use this name db and then we want to use port 3306 which is standard database host for uh, mysql and then wordpress underscore b underscore user as i said they are all here so we'll use the password copy this and um, what's the user i'm just going to call this root uh, oh, actually sorry we did call this root mysql user and then the password was there all on and we called that password next i want to specify the network and the network as we had up here is hyphen wp that's the name of it and then finally i just want to link these networks up together so i'm going to come back down onto the first line the networks oh works colon indent and uh, it's wp and then finally, I just want to make sure that it's aware of our mapped volume or so volumes and then db underscore data column. Save that and that should be all of the configuration we need for our Docker Compose. So as I said down here, you know, if I run Docker PS, we've not got any containers running at all. I'm going to clear this. So just off, just then off camera, I was actually reading the Docker Compose file before moving forward onto the next part of the video, and I noticed that I've got a spelling mistake. So where I've got network and network down here, it actually needs to be networks. So I need to run networks. Oh, so I change this to networks and then save this file. So that should be everything. And now what we can do is run Docker Compose, Docker hyphen Compose up. And this basically will take our configuration and create our images or pull the images down and create our containers and, and do all the, the magic in the background. However, um, this will be just tied to this particular terminal window. So what we run is hyphen D and that runs it in detached mode. So basically run in, in the background. So go ahead and run that. What it's gonna do is go away, fetch our images and then set everything up. And so if I run, now run a Docker PS, what you'll see is a few seconds ago, we created these, We've got a WordPress version with the latest uh, version of WordPress, MySQL running uh, 5.7. Um, and then we've also mapped our port 4000 to port 80 over here. So now if we go to localhost uh, for colon 4000, we have a fresh install of WordPress ready to go. So I'm gonna click continue. Right title, let's just call this our blog. Username, I'm gonna say root. Password root confirm use of weak password again. Obviously, I'm going to delete this in a second. Um, email root at root.com and then go ahead and install. Great, so now we can log in root root. Log in, and we have our WordPress instance running locally from our version uh, from our particular. Um, Docker Compose versions just completely isolated in its own instance. And just to mention finally before actually t uh, finishing this video off, we've got Docker PS and we've got our instances of um, WordPress running. Now if I want to actually terminate these I can use this, I can specify this ID so I could do Docker Container RM and then specify an ID. Um, however I could also terminate this whole thing and I can run docker-compose down and what that'll do is it'll remove our containers, it'll remove everything. And if I, I stop this from running, and it's going to stop. And then it also removes the containers as well. So if I do Docker um, PS, we've got no containers running now. We've got not, you know, nothing running for, by that ID. However, if I run Docker hyphen compose up hyphen D again, 
wait for that to load created it come back over here and reload everything's working so i hope that makes sense to everyone if you do have any questions as per usual please feel free to leave a comment down below but until next time take it easy